So I think it's about time that we meet our hosts this evening, certainly one member of the family. So ladies and gentlemen, please would you give a very warm welcome to the group managing editor of AMG, Kalpesh Solanki. Your Excellency, Prime Minister, guests of honour, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great privilege and honour to welcome you here this evening on behalf of our Editor-in-Chief, Ramniklal Chaganlal Solanki, CBE, to the 16th GG2 Leadership Awards Gala Dinner. Tonight, we celebrate and recognise achievement of exceptional individuals who have excelled and broken through barriers. Their triumph through adversity makes them remarkable people who deserve to be recognized. 16 years ago, we planted a small seed to bring people of power and influence together and celebrate diversity. From that humble beginning, this seed has grown strong roots that today we can be proud to welcome some of the most powerful and influential people from across the country. And we are especially proud and honoured to welcome our very special chief guest tonight, Prime Minister, the Right Honourable David Cameron. <laughs> Under his leadership, the Conservative Party have become much more inclusive and have made significant progress in reaching out to the Asian community. His presence here this evening is a testament to his commitment to diversity and building a truly inclusive Britain. He is primus inter pares, the first amongst equals, a phrase which resonates with the Hindu philosophy from the Maha Upanishad of Vasudeva Gutambakam. This phrase means the whole world is one family, and that each and every one of us is connected to each other, irrespective of our nationality, religion, or color. It is a philosophy of life that inculcates individuals to be responsible for their actions. And it is a philosophy that extends to us personally, to organizations, and government. Each of us has a purpose. That purpose may be to secure a job, provide for the family, save lives or help others. Organizations also have purpose. Some are created to enhance humanity, some serve those who are weak or poor, and some are created to generate wealth. Governments also have a purpose. They can be totalitarian or elected by the people they serve. But central to all organizations and governments is the creation of a team with the right talent built around a leader with core values. A team that is a reflection of the people it represents and customers it serves. And at the heart of this team, there must be a robust strategy that attracts and retains talent from all communities. Because businesses that embrace diversity have a more solid footing in the marketplace. The issue of diversity in its simplest sense is about understanding and respecting the differences between us. It's not just about tolerance. It has to be much deeper and has to be part of our DNA. So real change comes when people of power and influence are not only inclusive, but must be seen to be inclusive and embrace individuals from all walks of life. Elected governments must serve at the will of its people. It must be fair and equitable. It should not be seen to discriminate against some of its citizens. But the debate on immigration has the unintended consequence of hurting Britain's visible minorities who have lived in the UK for decades. Immigration has become like an arms race 
where political parties are vying for the most popular position. The debate is focused on the negative impact of immigration, stoking fears amongst white middle-class Britons that immigrants will take their jobs and homes or they will live off the benefits system. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 34, states that one must treat a foreigner as a native, born amongst us, and to love him as our own. There is an important and positive side to immigration which we should be celebrating and talking about. We must remember immigrants create jobs as well. From the Asian rich list, From the Asian rich list, we have businesses that collectively employ millions of people, pay billions in taxes, and have become great corporate citizens. We live in a connected world where the best scientists, engineers, doctors, and business people can choose to live and work anywhere in the world. My father came to this country in 1964 on borrowed money. He came to create a better life for himself and his family. He was a pioneer starting our first publication, Garavi Gujarat, with my mother on April Fool's Day, 1968. He traveled to major cities selling subscriptions. He faced immense hardship, but he was determined to provide for his family. Today, we have followed the success of the Asian community and have operations in America, India, and Britain, where we reach millions of readers through print, online, face-to-face, -face, over the phone, and direct mail. We have evolved to meet the needs of our customers, reaching out to them at every touch point and providing news as it happens and on their preferred device. I know we share similar history with many of you in this room. This is why we must never forget the hardship and intolerance our fathers and grandfathers faced. And their incredible hard work has laid the foundation for us to stand on their shoulders and shape our future. But our success is also attributable to the fact that this great country has welcomed us and given us the framework to reap rewards for our hard work. From the first curry houses and corner shops, we have prospered and built the finest Indian restaurants to multinational businesses. Today, there are 27,000 Asian doctors in the UK, 50,000 food and drink retailers, 10,000 Indian restaurants, and over half of all chemists are Asian-owned. We have excelled in various professions, especially accountancy, the law, and dentistry. We must learn from great leaders like Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King, and Nelson Mandela. They used peaceful and non-violent means against governments. They engaged thousands of people in civil disobedience, and in the end, they won. As a community, we must play our part. We should never tolerate extremists and allow them to do irreparable damage to our hard-earned reputation and to race relations. We must actively seek out the fanatics who kill and are under false pretexts and ensure they do no harm. Because a society fragmented on race, faith and cultural lines can lead to heightened tensions. We all make up multicultural Britain, so it's our duty to contribute and play our part by assimilating. Ethnic minorities make up around 8% of the UK population, yet their student numbers are around 17% of graduate and postgraduate level. The third generation, like my sons and daughter, have very little memory of the hardship their grandparents or parents actually faced. They don't see themselves as immigrants. They are British. This generation is not restrained by racism, but more by perception. It's how they view organizations that matters. So it's important to have peers and mentors 
the community can look up to at senior levels of government and business. We have come so far since the murder of Stephen Lawrence and the McPherson report. We have had countless reports over the years on the Crown Prosecution Service, the NHS, the prison service, the police, the armed services, and the list continues, all designed to highlight a problem exists. Targets are then set to increase recruitment from ethnic communities. This is all done with good intention because organizations must reflect the communities they serve. But where are the black and Asian chairman and chief executives of the leading banks and private sector companies? The lack of color at the very top and in the boardrooms shows much more needs to be done. One great Swami said that we can choose to remain in darkness by closing the curtains, but the sun continues to shine come what may. So let the sun shine throughout boardrooms and government to create a rainbow where dreams are made. And like Martin Luther King, we too have a dream that one day our children, the sons and daughters of factory workers, shopkeepers and bus drivers will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character and sit at the country's and sit at the country's top table from the boardrooms of corporate Britain to the corridors of power. Thank you.